I started a series spending 100 days in each biome building a village. So far, I was doing this alone, overcoming the challenges along the way and conquering each biome. But I felt lonely. So this time I'm not doing it alone. I brought over 6 of my subscribers to join me on my epic journey into the seemingly peaceful but deadly plains biome to build not one village but two villages. They are limited to wearing only the root chest piece and troll helmet. And yes, no pants. This is the story arc of how I started my no pants empire. But it's not going to be easy because each of them is given three lives and once they run out, they are dead forever. So it's up to me to keep them safe until the end and complete the project. If you have been enjoying my videos, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like if you want me to continue with this type of video. Alright? Let's jump right in. Day 1 started off with figuring out what to call this wonderful group of Vikings. We tossed a few names out until we settled on one most of us agreed on. What should I call you guys? You mean as a group or yeah. individually? As a group. I mean, these, you guys will these, get you. These minions. These minions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was thinking maybe like these uh, bees, like we're gonna be hour. busy bees building. Can I call it minions? <laughs> There you go. No. Vinions, yeah. Oh, that don't bother me. I don't agree. Yeah, Cherry sure wasn't a fan. I gave the guys a tour of the villages so that they can get acquainted with each building. Well, maybe not too acquainted. I don't think Steve liked this one bit. Bruh. Wow, like little sheep. We're, we're following Mama Duck. So while I was giving a tour, I was thinking on a couple of things to get the vineyards ready for the planes. Like stable food supply, accommodations, armor, potions for certain occasions, and battle tactics in case of challenging raids and future fights. I was only able to get the team clothed in troll armor donated by the Frank Foundation. Before we proceed any further, I needed to assess each person's weaknesses and strengths to know what I'm dealing with. So I had a one-on-one -on -one and asked, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Maybe organization, maybe? My ability to laugh at myself and to state the obvious. Her building things, I love building. My strength is dying. <laughs> Um, my strengths, I would I would have to say building. Strengths are my team, who I'm playing with. My weaknesses, a anything stronger than a gray dwarf. I, I'm squishable. Trolls. Huh? Anything bigger than me. Uh, I guess just the fighting. Every living thing in this game out there going to kill me. Staying alive. <gasps> I'd say that's a pretty big weakness. <laughs> and my weaknesses? is no pants, and I'm only doing that because he is my fave. <laughs> that was cute, Lisa. <laughs> go, go, go. After the session ended, each Vinion were given a space to rest their heads. Most of them chose to stay in Georgetown, where it seems more peaceful. Preparation work began, and the first thing we focused on was food. Cherry took control of the farming, making use of the space at Georgetown, while a few of us went out hunting, mining, and foraging. During the preparation period, their deaths won't reduce their life count, just because I have unlocked some dangerous raids that may be too much for them oh, to the handle. Oh, look, it's trying to get me. Oh yeah, did I mention we're gonna fight Mortar? Defeating her will unlock one of the worst raids ever. The Horde is coming. A few days passed and everything seemed to be going well, until I heard some bad news. Oh, babe, babe's gonna be upset. Babe! Brenda, Brenda died! My dear sweet Brenda was not just any piggy. She was family. She had been with me for over 400 days, but because of my negligence, she got attacked by bats. Now she was gone. But she left a piggy behind, so that's something. Many more days have passed since Brenda died, and the Vinians were hard at work, except for one Vinian, Nevi. She was last seen heading out hunting alone and never returned that day. Her status was unknown 
and I was short on one vineyard. So because this wasn't a 100 day challenge this time around, so they took the time to grind for a lot of food and resources. We had problems finding space in Dwarfinch Tavern to put the food. I had to place iron chests in the floor to get extra storage. But food alone wasn't going to get us through the plains. They needed the proper chest armor, which is the root armor, to keep those pesky mosquitoes from instantly killing them because of the pierce resistance it has. So a few of the vineyards came along with me to do some hunting for every single stumpy we could find. Most of the time during these hunts, Scott and Sarah were by my side. Even though Sarah was not skilled in combat, she was not afraid to get her hands dirty. Well, as long as it wasn't a stumpy. Yeah. I'm trying to stay as far away from the abbey as I can. And Scott proved to be a skilled fighter. He showed great courage to protect his comrades from the same problems he caused in the first place. Danger zone. Hi, Jerry. I brought a fruit. Oh, that was a nice laugh. Ooh, that hurt. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Wow, I had almost full health. I had a, I had full health. One hit. That's right, Scott. Look. Look at what you caused. Now what do you have to say for yourself? Danger zone. The good news is this happened during the preparation period. In fact, if I had never made a preparation period, by the time I was ready to fight Mortar, I wouldn't have any minions left. Yes, they would all be dead. Now we need is you are hunted. Now we need is you are hunted. <laughs> yeah. Don't even start oh that. God. Don't even start that. That happens, I'm on, sorry. <laughs> I got another Binion to fill Nevi's spot after she vanished. His name is Yas. His strength is... I like to build stuff. And weakness? My weakness, gravity. It's because I always fall down when I hit stuff. One of my main concerns for the Binions was that their skill level was low, and I needed a fast way to get their levels up. So I thought of an idea. Why not build a gym? That's right, I built a fully functional gym equipped with the finest technology a viking can find. And it was easy, all I needed were signs and a sprinkle of imagination along with a drugger spawner in a swamp crypt. So here's how I built it. So for the weapon training area, I used the signs and created a barrier to block the mobs from chasing the minions once they have spawned in. I pushed the signs as low as possible so that both the viking and the mob doesn't break it while attacking each other in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It also served as an entrail farm. I also made a block trainer which was not so easy and requires two people to build it. So Scott volunteered to be a meat shield to keep the level 1 archers busy in a separated room while I lured a new one into the group from the spawner until we had a total of 7 dragger archers to help leveling the blocking skill quickly. I placed the signs higher for the block trainer so that the draggers don't get pushed over the barrier when we step aside to recover. Scott had a great idea to build a jump trainer so that you can jump in rapid succession. I built a treadmill so you don't look like this but rather look like this. And after a hard workout session, you can take a quick wash. The gym was a nice place, free from all the rays, a safe space, as long as you go through the safe checks. <laughs> Ever since I built the gym, the Vinians were seeing their gains and got a new level of confidence. Sarah and Scott were so confident that they teamed up to hunt serpents without me on the ship. But they got a reality check. They both died. Oh my god. This is not gonna be fun to get back to it. They both died in a swamp trying to repair their boat in the night and were assaulted by Jerry. So it was up to me to help them to recover their stuff. When we got there, Scott died again, not realizing the water was infested with leeches. But things got crazy when almost every living thing from the swamp started walking towards us. Wolleton the skeleton, Blobby Bobby, Billy Joe, Larry the leech, and to top it all off, there was a stumpy lurking nearby. 
it turned out into an all out brawl which I was not expecting. I held my ground and to my surprise, it was easy. Once all of that was settled, I accompanied Scott and Sarah on their hunt for serpent meat. They thought it would be super good because you would be able to cook serpent stew which gives a whopping 80 health which is a huge food upgrade. After the end of our hunt which spans across a couple days, we ended up with 49 serpent meat. The preparation period was nearing its end and seeing that we had a lot of food stored up and most of the minions were fully geared with their armor maxed out. They also got a few civil weapon upgrades. One noteworthy upgrade is the Frostner. I gave it to Scott because he was like my right hand man and was there on most of my dangerous mountain adventures getting some silver. I also got some upgrades and was ready to take on Mortar and take on the plains bio. Eventually, things started to slow down a bit and the Vinians had free time to do whatever. Yash decorated the interior of his house in the swamp to make it cozy. Cherry decorated hers as well, making it warm and welcoming. Some spent their final days mostly at the gym before the real journey began. I spent a little time with Cherry who I saw struggling to catch a mammoth sized fish. Her cries of frustration lured me over to join her. I'm still trying to catch the big kahuna. There's two of them. You? You, you took the other one that I was working on for ages. Oh my god, he went for yours. Stupid thing. No. I nearly I, live a I nearly stole it, but I didn't have any room. I saw you. <laughs> yes, I caught both the five star and the four star fish. I mount the five star fish above the fireplace as a trophy flexing my fishing skills. Having the vineyards around certainly made the villages come alive. But you know what they say? All good things must come to an end. The next day after the preparation period ended, I assembled the Vinians to give them a pep talk because everyone didn't want to die. Afterward, we headed up over to the mountain village, which I finally named Timmy Town. We stopped by the boulder tav to pick up the serpent stew before we set sail. I, I have the vibrating chair. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we sailed to Mortar Island and landed on the Meadows Biome so we can have a safe start. Ooh, I feel so nervous. I don't know why I feel nervous. Why, why do I feel nervous? I, I'm nervous too. Yeah, me too. I'm only nervous because I know there are a limited number of deaths available. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason. It's and a I lot have of pressure. no skills. We started climbing the mountain. Most of the time, Kondil keeps getting way ahead of me. And then it happened. Wolf. Incoming. Conville. Conville. Conville was the first to die, leaving him with only two lives. And I'm starting to think he was serious on what he said on day one. Dying. <laughs> we eventually found Mortar, but we found something else. This interesting looking spot that instantly sparked some cool ideas I want to try in the future. If you want to see this spot, the seed for this world is down below. After a few moments of sightseeing, someone was missing. Oh, where's what? Conville? Where's Conville? Conville! Oh, down now. Conville, what are you doing? Oh, I got a wolf out of Drake. Oh, the problem is they came up and I had no stamina. <laughs> Conville. <laughs> Conville. Say my ass. Later, we gathered three eggs that were scattered around the mountain. We then created a safe spot we could retreat to by digging around the stone platform and once that was Get done, your, it was time. Ready. Straight ahead. After pelting her with arrows, it took a while before we got her past the halfway mark. 
There have been a few close calls after she rained down ice shards on us multiple times, but things got a little bit more intense when Winnie and a few other wolves lurking nearby joined the party, giving the minions a hard time to focus their attacks. So I had to pull up my shield and butter knife. I tried to keep Mother's attention away from the minions so they don't get hit by her morning breath. I tried to play it safe keeping my shield up, dodging all the breaths so it doesn't freeze me in place and attack when there is an opening. At some point, I got too confident and had to retreat a bit. But she was almost down, so I made my final push. Just me, just me. The work is down here first, but it doesn't work fine. She's yeah. Almost set. She's almost down. One more, one more shot. One more shot. One more shot. Got her. Dog. Nice. Yeah. Well done, guys. Well done. Nice. Woo! So V, well done. let's not put her in the obliterator. <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> So to fill you in on what they are talking about, after the preparation period ended, the villains were hoping to head back to spawn to grab the bone mass buff that would give them a temporary defense boost. They thought I had it after I defeated bone mass. <laughs> yeah, about that. Got a wishbone and a trophy that looks nasty. I didn't want it so I chuck it in the obliterator over at Dwarfhenge village. I have no regrets. <laughs> Right after we took down Mortar, we went back to spawn to mount our trophy on the stone, granting us the power to change the wind when we are sailing. We all did our victory dance celebrating that no one died during that intense battle. It was time to usher in a new age. When we took down Mortar, she dropped a material called Dragon Tear, so that we could unlock a new workstation which gives us access to a bunch of cool stuff like a blast furnace, a windmill, a spinning wheel, and an oven. I wasted no time expanding the kitchen at Dwarfhenge Village Tavern and added the oven so we could start baking new foods. This was how the tavern looked before the expansion, and here is the new look. Cherry took the time to organize the food chest and put down labels that made it easier for us to find what we needed. Scott and I wanted to take on a fooling village that was near the border of the Black Force that is not far from Dwarfhenge Village. We took the smart and safe approach by sniping the foolings while standing on top of a burial chamber. After we cleared out the camp, we got our hands on black metal, barley, and flax. We were able to smelt the black metal into bars using the blast furnace and unlocked some new weapons and shields for the vineyards to use. We chunked the barley into the windmill so that it can be processed into flour which was used to make all sorts of foods, but there was a problem. All of those foods use a lot of the flour, so we burned through our new foods to feed 7 people. But at that time, I never saw it very important, I thought the current food we had was good enough. But oh boy, was I wrong. During that time, my focus was mainly to find the right location to build a plains village. On the same island where we found mortar, there was some plains that was between two mountains, one on the left and the other on the right. But we had a few tenants to evict. I wasn't sold on this location, but it was on my list to consider. So because there wasn't a rush, I wanted to find that special location because this was my favorite biome and I wanted to do it justice. While everyone else was taking care of other things and staying away from the plains for now, Scott and I teamed up again to check out the plains we saw near the border of the swamp where the gym was located. There, we took on our second fool in village. A few days later, Sarah decided to join us to see what this plains had in store for us. We finally got that raid Scott have been asking for. Now we need is you are hunted. Going through the plains felt a bit easy, and we were impressed by the unique locations we found so far. This looks huge. And another yeah, mountain. Yeah, this looks really huge. Oh, and that know. massive mountain right there. Yeah, that one is huge. Along the way, we found a stone hench, but it was small. Okay, so this wasn't the big one I was thinking of. This is a little one. Yeah, these are tiny. This would make a great entryway right here, V. Oh yeah. Like a road coming through there. Sarah had some cool ideas, but I wasn't sold on this location. I wanted to see if there was more. Later on, while we were walking at the base of the very tall and steep mountain, 
Sarah shared with Scott and I something interesting. If we get hunted, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about being hunted. Like, they could only come at us from one angle, and if we got up high enough, they couldn't even get us. In one of my worlds, B, I used a, uh, something like this, and I built into the mountain, and I call it my bird nest base. Oh, shoot. Two because mosquitoes above us. I, I just built right into something vertical like this because no enemies can attack you from above or below. A little bit later, we finally got around the mountain and saw another spot we wanted to check out. But the night was upon us and we had no rested buff. So I suggested to Sarah and Scott that we should head back to a nearby spot where we had a campfire set up with a little shelter. But then it happened. Okay. We got to a slightly higher ground, but we were overwhelmed. I tried to save Sarah and Scott, but my efforts was futile. They were dead. Around like hell towards a tiny edge I saw, we waited. Eventually, they gave up, and I spent the rest of the night alone. The next day after last night's tragedy, I headed back to rescue Scott and Sarah. Because they were stranded. In a tower. At the border of the plains and the black forest. I hope V makes it back soon. What? Yeah, me too. We made a big blunder by leaving behind our portal to get home all the way over there. What? Shh. 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 I didn't do it. God, don't oh, I get the wrong button. Don't get our attention. We've got attention. We need to sit down and be quiet until he gets back. I finally got to the tower and had to head out almost immediately to make good use of the daylight to pick up the portal and hoping I wouldn't get hunted. Because then we would all be screwed. But in the end, it all went well and we got back to the spot without any issues. They both got their stuff, but sadly, they were down to two lives. It was concerning. So the next day, we had a meeting to evaluate what went wrong but there just wasn't enough time to drink the stamina and still get up the hill because i had none left and they caught me and killed me <laughs> the food was poor it was pretty poor we need to work on the food situation and create a farm later on scott and lisa joined me to head back over to the spot we wanted to check out that was before scott and sarah turned into dog food oh yeah and sarah bailed on us she was still traumatized we saw a full yeah. village behind the monolith and wanted to raid it for the barley and flax. We first secured a safe spot on the monolith and built a platform, then rained down arrows on the village. After we cleared out the village, we thought that this was a great spot to create a farm, but also took the opportunity to tame some loxes that we saw popped in nearby. Why are you running? Why are you running? The Vinians weren't sure of my plans and were concerned that if we built stone walls, the goblins will demolish it and attack whoever was in the farm. So they were suggesting to use dirt walls, which are indestructible. They were expressing their concerns mostly for Cherry, who has been spearheading the farming from day one. So I took that into consideration and thought of a layout. So first, Lisa and I used up all the stone we had been storing up from the Great Off Farm to build a dirt wall to secure the area before we start shaping the land. I was thinking to add a bit of verticality to the farm, so I started to raise the middle part of the farm, making that the highest point. But I couldn't raise the ground any further because 8 meters was the limit starting from the normal undisturbed level of the land. So being the crazy person I am, I wanted the middle to stand up more. I thought that making the ground lower around it, I could get a bit more height. So with the help of the Vinians, we dug out the whole area. Sadly, we couldn't go any lower because we started seeing water. While we were working, we got our first horde is attacking raid. They couldn't get in. So, anyways, I added a slope to access the plateau in the middle. Afterwards, I proceeded to create the layout of the road that would connect to the slope and go around the farm. Creating the road helped in creating the layout of the farm area that I wanted with two levels. One with a broad base, then a smaller raised area in the middle of it. I then used the stone stairs to go around the edges to make it look clean and then worked on the slow pathway and came up with a design that the Vinians copied and recreated on the other side. Once they were done, we headed over to Mordor's Island to gather some tar from the plains that we scouted a couple days ago. I needed it to create a windmill design I thought about building on the plateau. 
So Scott and Sarah rejoined me for another adventure and we ate way better food this time around when we were out exploring just in case we got hunted. I didn't want to put the Vinians in harm's way by taking on the tar pit because these black zits, pimple, blackhead or whatever you want to call them are very dangerous. So instead, I used the foolings from a nearby village to do the work for us and then we could watch the carnage unfold. <laughs> Once the dust cleared, we took out the remnants that were roaming about, drained the tar pit, and got the tar that we needed. We later got back to the farm and started working on the windmill. I used snake walls and regular wooden walls together to create a pattern design for the walls of the structure, along with wood iron poles to provide stability as I go higher. For this windmill build, I planned on incorporating the windmill that is already in the game so that the build is aesthetically pleasing and functional at the same time. So I used the 45 degree beam first for the roof, then finish off the middle with the 26 degree beam. Once the basic structure was completed, I switched my focus on the entrance of the build which started off like this and then ended up like this. I added the spiral stairs to access the top floor of the windmill and also an edit where we could access the windmill inlet and outlet. This was the final look, but it was only the beginning. Meanwhile, Scott has had enough. Scott was tired of running around in the plains without the bone mass buff, so because I didn't want to fight him again, he took matters into his own hands. Scott initially thought it would be a walk in the park, but because the bosses got a boost when there were more people in the world, it proved to be a bit of a challenge. So Sarah, although didn't want to join in initially, she decided to help out. I thought they had it, so I didn't make a move until... You are not in this fudge. <gasps> oh no, Sarah. What the fudge? What got me? Poison is dead. Oh, my poison ran out. Oh my god. <gasps> I started scrambling to make some frost arrows to join the fight after I saw that message. It was really serious and I couldn't afford Sir to die again. It took a while but I pelted Bowmas with arrows back to back to back. They finally defeated him and got what they wanted, but at what cost? Did it Sarah? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I think he helped. Well? I'm glad he was able to finally come over and help with that. That makes it easier. Sarah was on her last life. So the question is, was it really worth it? Few days passed after the bone mass incident with Sarah got me thinking. So the current status of the Vinians, Sarah was on one life. Scott was now on one life after he fell to his death while building. Bambi was still on two lives and it's only because I placed him on Gravedor farm duty to protect him from himself. Cherry, Lisa and Yaz were still on three lives. So I was thinking, how can I protect them even more from dying in future battles and how can I protect them from their own weakness? Hunville was kind of suicidal, Yaz's weakness was gravity, Scott mentioned his weakness is gravity after he cracked his ankles. I died to gravity 4 times already just working on the windmill. Who knows, someone else may become a victim and we haven't started working on the two villages yet. So to find the answer to all these problems, I knew I would have to search for it deep down in the mist. That was my only hope. While I was brainstorming on the future, Yaz has been busy on his solo adventures he found a two-star board that he bred and got a baby piggy that he forced on the ship to sail it all the way back to Georgetown. He said the reason he had to sail with a baby piggy versus an adult boar was because baby piggies don't go over the edge of the ship so easily. He said it took him a few tries but eventually got one over. But that's not all he did. He even caught a two-star wolf and brought it over and built a wolf breeder that looks really neat and compact. It boosted the wolf meat production. I really like the design. He even did a makeover of Georgetown Farm. This is the before, this was after. 
It was beautifully built. Almost like walking through a cornfield. Not quite tall enough. And he also took two hours and made a mushroom path so that we could collect mushrooms faster. Back to the farm in the plains, Scott was feeding me ideas to build a bridge to connect the farm to the outside, which wasn't in my plan because I was going to end working on the farm after I built the windmill, seeing I accomplished the purpose for it. But I couldn't help myself and I had a design for a stone bridge I wanted to test out. So I created a frame to work with that have iron beams to support the stone walls once they were placed down. We first focused on the top of the bridge and used stone walls for the path and with the help of iron beams and cages, we added a bit of depth to the side. For the bottom arch of the bridge, we snapped in 1 meter cages that were connected to iron poles that would look like columns later on to help support the 1 meter stone to hold the curved shape. Once that was done, we filled the middle with stone walls and stone floors, added some custom columns and some details that were a bit tricky to do and achieved this look. But that was for one side, we had to repeat the steps for the other side. Once we completed the other side, we added a bit more details and decorations. We were pleased with the way it came out and it fits in nicely with the area. After I completed the bridge project, I left the whole farm in the hands of Scott and Sarah to finish what I started and also for their own safety because where I was planning to go was so far the deadliest biome in the world and the nastiest, the Mistlands. It holds the power I needed to answer my problems and I only need 5 of them, but that's just part of it. I needed to find some other important stuff. Once I am successful, I would unlock a builder's dream item, the Feather Fallen Cape, and the protection staff that would be super helpful in keeping the Vinians alive. So I summoned Lisa, Cherry and Yaz to join me on my voyage to the Mistlands, seeing that they had the most hearts. We made sure to carry ooze bombs frost arrows and materials for signs yes signs i thought that the concept that worked on building the gym should help in the cockroach infested dungeons once we were all ready we headed over to mortar's island to set sail from there seeing it was closer to the edge of the world so that we could have a faster chance of locating the mist lens well one that doesn't have much mist once everything was good we set sail towards the unknown Will death find us along the way, or will we return to the warmth of our cozy home? On our first morning in the Mistland, we proceeded with caution and kept sailing along the border looking out for interesting structures that weren't in the mist. We landed on a small island and I went ahead to scout a bit and saw a tower that wasn't shrouded in the mist. We made it our first point of interest to check out. But before we got there, we had to warn Yaz because he knew nothing about Mistlands. Alright, so Yash, don't hit anyone, please. Yes, I'm gonna hit them all, right? No, don't even, don't lay a finger. Don't even look too hard on them. They will murder us in a blink of an eye. We needed an outpost for our operation, and the best option was to bully the little people without them realizing and claiming their stuff. So how we plan on doing that? by using this little fella, pufferfish, which poisons you when you touch it. We started the procedure and it was slow and painful. Not for the Dwargas, oh no. They get the sweet relief of... We love you. Yeah, I'm coming with another one. Move a little bit so I can get him in there. Next, now serving number four. After we evicted the Dwargas, we claimed the tower and got two of the essential items I needed, which were this extractor needle and soft tissue. But more on that later on. We then planned our next move to find an infested mine. Later on, we found one that was near our outpost, but sadly, it was in the mist, and I wasn't gonna take any chances and risk the lives of my vineyards. Hoping we would find one that wasn't in the mist, we hopped back into the boat and sailed further southeast. We eventually found one that was near a swamp, and just when we were about to dock. Oh my gosh. Those, those things are, oh my gosh. Yeah. They shoot ticks at you and they fire. You're on fire. You die. We needed to get rid of this flying backside with the worst butt acne I have ever seen. Oh my god. So we headed towards the swamp and lowered it there to feed it with arrows. Once it was out of the way, we sailed back to a nearby island with the infested mines in view. We made sure to get a portal up and return home to get rested. After that, we returned to clear out the cockroaches at the entrance and entered our first infested mine. What happens 
We started to explore the mine and we were greeted by ticks and roaches. We dealt with them with ease, but there was a one star soldier I wasn't gonna take my chance with. So I started to use the sign trick to block his path so we could shoot him. Things were going well until. Oh my god, I fell down. Something coming. For me, falling down. Oh, and I just did it again. Damn it. But that wasn't the worst of our problems. Yaz got too close to the doorway and the seeker broke the signs. Broke it. The signs. I don't know if my arrows do any damage. That could easily go south, but fortunate for us, it didn't. Yaz was able to hold his attention until it was dead. What arrows are you using? Yours seem to I just hit him for... Yeah, yeah. So whatever, the room yeah. he was guarding had two small rooms, and there it was. Okay. Black Ooh, core. core. Nice. It seems like I'm carrying the gold here. So far in total, we found four black cores, so I only needed one more. After we were finished with our first infested mine, we sailed back up north to see if there were other infested mines out in the open. Eventually, we found one more, but before we could go in, we had to get rid of the cockroaches and one of these things again. We got most of them, except one, a two-star cockroach. I was pretty high up and safe and yes was fine, but Lisa somehow slipped down the hillside and was having difficulty to get back up. Her health was low, and the rain wasn't helping either, affecting her stamina. The roach was getting closer and closer and closer to Lisa. By the shortest of margins, Lisa escaped. Zaz and I quickly took him out before he got a second chance at her, and what a close call that was. Once we were all safe, we set up another portal and entered the mine. We went through this one with ease, going through it like a bulldozer because we had bone mass buff on. At the end of it all, we had a total of 7 black cores collected from both mines. Back over at Dwarfin's village, I summoned the Vinians to celebrate our accomplishment. Here we have- Ooh. You hear your sarcasm, Cherry. Love. <laughs> but that wasn't the real prize. I needed one more ingredient for the more important stuff. Yeah. Days before I started planning for Miss Lands, around the time I started working on the farm, Scott and I went out exploring on the island where Timmy Town was located. There we found a swamp that was connected to the border of a Miss Land and found a Yijisu route pulsing with energy. Having that location in mind, we sailed to that spot along with the needed materials. Once we were there, I used the extractor needle we found along with some other materials to create an extractor that gave me the sap I needed from this route. I then used the black core we collected and built the refinery that needed sap and soft tissue to create Ether, which is like a little radioactive ball that could potentially kill you. Once I had enough Ether combined with other materials, I made the first feather cape and the protection staff. But that was one cape. I needed more materials to make an additional six. So over an extended period of time, doing some solo adventures and acquiring more materials, I was finally able to get each of them their own to protect them from fall damage. I wanted to increase the team's chances of survival when we were out adventuring, so I made an additional staff of protection and gave it to Lisa along with the title Garden Angel. Lisa has been supportive to everyone from the start, trying to lend a helping hand where necessary, a fitting tool for her strength and character. Finally, I could switch my focus back to the plains village. I needed the right location to put it, but before I went out and searched, first I checked on the vineyards as to what they did to the farm. During the time I was away going around in the mistlands, a lot was done to the farm. Hands down, this was the most beautifully built place so far on this map. I am happy to present to you, Loxington Keep.
This portion of the build was done by Sarah. It gave her the tax of making a garden, so with the help of the plant everything mod, she was able to achieve this look, which was beautifully done. The dragon egg on display was a nice touch, along with the serpent trophy living up to its name, the dragon oasis. It's a lovely place to gather to have a chat and drink some mead. Next we have this workshop built by Scott, which was a great build and a viable addition to the farm. It had all the needed workstations in one spot with a nearby fire to keep you warm while working and a reasonable amount of storage for our hoarding needs. Moving over to the animal rain area where we kept our loxes and our wolf companions, this area was a joint effort by Sarah, Yaz and Scott. It felt just right how it was made. Yaz, a man focused on maximum efficiency, took it upon himself and built a lovely bakery with the convenience of the windmill on top to pump out flour like crazy and a neatly built storage to put it all away. Another area of the farm is a small dock built together by Yaz, Sarah and Scott. Yaz came up with the idea first seeing that we were sailing a lot from the farm to gather resources. Then Sarah and Scott came along and added their touch to the area. It was nice, neat and simple. We also had a small courtyard at the entrance by the monolith that I built after the vineyards were done with Loxington. I also built a road connecting to this flat bridge that doesn't look oh, fancy but uh, served a crucial purpose in keeping the goblins from crossing or following you. A useful trick that was taught guys, to me by Sarah. So it works because like they won't walk off of ledges or edges of things and so they perceive it as a ledge and they won't walk forward across it because they think it's a hole. The Vinians did a great job. Honestly, this farm was supposed to be small and basic, but we all got carried away. And to think this was not one of the two villages I had in mind. The bar had been raised and I was looking forward to seeing how the two villages will turn out. After the tour, Lisa, Yaz and Sarah joined me to sail northwest from Luxington to find a location for the Plains Village. I also needed to find a place for the second village which I thought could be a lovely little fishing village. After sailing for a few minutes, we came across an island that had the meadows by them, which I thought was ideal for the fishing village. We explored it a bit and we were sold. Seeing the creeks going through parts of the island sparked so many ideas in our heads to transform this land into something beautiful. Also, what made this spot interesting, there was a nearby island with plains in view and if that had a special location for the plains village, then it would be perfect. So we headed over to the island and made our necessary preparations before exploring any further. We started hunting some loxes because we needed all the fur we could get for decorations. But after taking down the lox, that's when we saw it. Oh, look over there. It's a little uh, ring. Perfect Stonehenge. And it wasn't far from the Meadows Island we found earlier. There was a stream near it that sparked an idea for a bridge that could be used to access the village I had in mind for the other side and use the Stonehenge to create a market area of some sort, maybe a future project for another episode. Overall, I was pleased with this location, but it was gonna take a lot of work. Prior to discovering these locations, the Vinians worked hard in gathering building resources from each biom and were itching to start. So I gave the Vinians the green light and they did not hesitate. First, for the fishing village, I gave each Vinian the freedom to develop their own home and nearby surrounding. So they started decimating this peaceful undisturbed tiny forest and got a clearer view of the island. A few of them already had ideas about how their home would turn out and had their house layout done in no time. But Yaz was on a different speed. When everyone was doing layouts, he built a little storage house already with a dock to park his boat and he also had the main house layout waiting for him. Sarah wasn't far behind, she had her house frame built and she was throwing some walls down and was about to start working on her roof. While some of the videos were busy, earlier Conville shared an idea to have the creek lead into a pond which I agreed with him on because I had a similar idea. So before the idea went away, we started to terraform the land and dug out the pond to achieve the ideal size and transform it into a nice chill spot. Later on, Lisa and Cherry joined together to build one home and it was no surprise to me because they were like sisters. They spent most of their time with each other from day one. They were making good progress getting the frame of the structure up and getting the roof in place even though they were the last to start. 
Clownbeal started off well, but had to pause to process his thoughts better on his design after he made his layout. Meanwhile, Scott was making progress getting the walls done and finally got around to doing his roof. Around this time, Sarah and Yaz finished their structure and started terraforming the land around their home. Both built a little bridge to connect to their patch of land that fits in nicely with the environment. While construction was ongoing, we got a few raids on the island, but they never appeared because we placed down so many workbenches to spawn proof the island because we didn't want any walls to conceal the paradise we were building. Back to the pond project. On day one of the village construction, we found two Nick boys we wanted to keep alive for the pond. So I built a bridge over the creek that was connected to the pond and placed the cage underneath so they couldn't crawl out. I also added this Yegis tree using the plant everything mod and the sap I collected from the Mistlands root. Once I was done, I thought it was time to build my home. So I took a spot that was next door to Sarah and raised the land a bit so that the waves wouldn't affect the home during stormy days. I also wanted to place the house on stilts which was part of a building design I tested but never completed. So I created a layout using 2 meter core wood and made the front 20 meters in length and the side 16 meters. I gave the front and the left side a 2 meter allowance for a boardwalk and built the front walls of the house making it 4 meters high and 18 meters wide. For the roof, I used 45 degree walls first on the left side going up an additional 4 meters then switched over to 26 degree walls going all the way down to be in line with the right side base layout. Afterwards, I added a 2 meter roof over Ang to the front of the build. I added another roof in the middle facing the left and the right sides of the structure with another smaller roof structure in the middle facing the front. The build was coming along and I got too engrossed in the process and forgot to record the rest of it. So yeah, oopsies. After that, I thought it would be good to make a fish market. So I dug out this area and started to mold the land into the image in my head. So I used dark wood arches along with stone floors and built a fence for the market. I then added a well because I thought it would work well in the area along with some stalls. I thought I did a decent job with the layout of the fish market and I thought that this bridge was a nice addition to the area. Overall, I was satisfied with the market. Once all of that was done, finally, it was time to focus on the main village. The Vinians were gearing up for whatever tasks I was about to throw at them and one major task was terraforming. So first, I connected a beam from the Stonehenge entrance to where the village entrance was going to be that would be connected by a bridge later on. I told the Vinians to raise the ground to secure the area so that it would be a lot easier to focus my attention on building the village because the raids have been relentless. So while some Vinians were doing the walls, the others were digging out the middle. What I had in mind was to hit bedrock and then raise the ground in some areas to give the village multiple terrain levels to make it more unique compared to my previous villages. It was pretty much all hands on deck situation to speedily get the area ready. We pretty much devoured the land, but don't be fooled, it took us a few hours to get it done. Once we got the whole area dug out to bedrock, I started to mold the land. I used wooden beams as a guide to create this raised snake path that would lead to a wizard tower on a hill. I made an opening so that we can access the other side of the village, but I also planned to build a bridge that will connect to the other side of the snake path to get to the tower. Once that was done, I started working on the hill where the tower would be. I tried to raise the ground as high as possible and smoothen the snake path a bit more. Then I proceeded to work on the first area that would be seen after passing through the village gate, dividing it into two sections, one being higher than the other. I used the wooden beams as a guide to how high we should raise the area. After that, we focused on the back of the village, raising and flattening some areas. This was a result of our hard work, and it was time to jump into the nitty gritty. The first area I focused on was the bridge, and what I had in mind was to build a stone arch bridge. I placed on wooden walls to act as a canvas and centered it to the opening of the Stonehenge so that the bridge would be in line with it. I then proceeded to use iron beams and manually place them to create an arch for the top of the bridge. I then used the lining of those iron beams and placed a 2 meter gap below it at the center to place another arch so that both arches were centered with each other. I made sure that these iron beams were touching the ground for proper support. I then placed stone floors clipped to one side of the iron beams connected to both sides and used 2 meter stone walls on the bottom arch of the bridge. These steps were repeated on the other side. I started to fill the middle with 2 meter stone walls and mixed it with stone floors to create a nice wall texture. 
and finally wrapping it all up with my custom columns with some more arches and further details to the bridge. I moved on to working on the village entrance. I was thinking of a round tower on the left and a square structure to the right. I used wooden walls again to help create the archway entrance to the village which took a bit more playing around to get to a level that was good enough. Next I worked on the round tower and made the top broader than the bottom layout so I can give it depth and add the roof and other details and then finish up the square structure with some more details to make it pop. Now for the inside of the village. At the lower level after entering the village, I thought that it would be cool to have an archery station and a little house for the guards that would protect the village in the event of a raid. I started off using stake walls to build a guard house because I wanted a different type of wall texture other than the regular wooden and stone ones and thought it was fitting for this house. Once I added all the necessary decorations to get the general feel of the area, I switched my focus to working on a woodcut house. I thought it was needed for this village seeing that the plains biome had lots of birch trees that gave fine wood which was a high demand building resource at this stage of the game. So I came up with this design that was inspired by my earlier builds when I first started this journey. I envisioned that there would be a dead tree at the back of the workshop. So with the plant everything mod, I planted it using ancient seeds collected from my Gradoff farm. I proceeded to work on the roof of the main structure and created an open roof design for the wood shop area with a functioning chimney to the side which works on rainy days due to placing an angle beam inside that protects the fire and has enough space for the smoke to exit the chimney. Next to the guard house, I added a random house that had no function really, I just needed to fill the space. So I came up with this design which I thought was okayish, wasn't 100% sure about it but I was already invested in the build so I kept it. Next I built a layout for a tavern which took some time to figure out compared to the others but after playing around with some ideas it turned into this and after adding some details to it I fell in love with the build. So up to the point when I started the village gate the minions were barred from seeing the progress because I wanted to do a grand reveal. But Sarah was spoiled a little early. God V, that's amazing. I wanted her to decorate this tavern. She did some decorating for me in the windmill at Loxington and I was pleased on how she decorated it. It had just the right amount of space to move around and it felt really cozy. Are you up for the challenge, Sarah? <laughs> V, I am definitely up for the challenge. So while Sarah was decorating the tavern, I started working on this bridge. Just like the first one I built, I used wooden walls as a canvas, centered to the path and placed iron beams connected to both sides to support the stone floor. I then connected a wood iron pole at the center of the bridge going down to the ground. I wanted to make two arches and add a column between them, so I used 1 meter beams to create the arches and then snapped 1 meter cages touching the wood iron poles for support and attached 1 meter stone to make the stone arch under the bridge. After that, I added a custom column at the center. Next, I started to work on the path that led up to where the tower was going to be. I used dark wood arches and created fences along the edge of the path. Afterwards, I made an octagonal layout for the tower and started to build the tower's entrance. I wanted it to have a grand entrance, so I made a large doorway to give that effect with a high roof. The story I wanted to create for this tower is that it was once a normal looking structure, but there was an accident that caused an explosion caused by a bunch of vikings who were playing around with Aether that they tried to study. The same thing that I used to make the feather cape. What had happened was that the energy from the Aether got unstable from their experiment and exploded. The energy affected three towers and caused them to float in the air along with a few leftover debris. So I used iron poles, iron beams and 1 meter iron cages to create the illusion. 1 meter stones were used to conceal the iron cages and poles, acting as the leftover floating debris. Well, I hope it gives that impression in the final preview when it's all done. So while I was on the last lap of building the village, all the Vinians finally completed their builds. So here is a walkthrough of the lovely village named by the Vinians, Windress. So the first home we're gonna look at was built by Sarah. Welcome to my fishing village house. I call this the TARDIS house because it looks much bigger on the inside than it does on the outside.
This next house was built by Yaz. So my grandfather was a fisherman. So this build was inspired by his house and boat house that was a part of a small fishing village where I grew up. Welcome to my fishing village build. Fiskaba, Fishberry. Just to annoy Yaz, sorry. <laughs> Not, but my inspiration was for the East Coast uh, fishing villages, where they have the homes, but a lot of the docks is where the fishing activity happens. So my design was to have the boats land up, bring the catches up, store them in sort of like freezers for keeping, making sure they're fresh. A little table here for cleaning and a bucket for the guts. The inside of the house inspiration was just a simple little home that uh, just to accommodate a fisher. Man with a little loft area up on the top with a good view of all the rest of the area, open kitchen and a nice beautiful dock because of the fisherman. So my inspiration for this build actually kind of came from uh, fishing uh, with my best friend as a child. Um, we went to to a lake on or a uh, river that headed into the Chesapeake Bay and they had just this little shack really more than anything else almost uh, like a trailer really where we caught and cooked uh, fish right there on, on a grill right outside. I wanted to model it kind of after that something small. This is my house the only one of its kind I have an emotional attachment to because out of all the houses I've built in each biome so far, I never felt like that was my home. But this does. Maybe it's because it's on an island. Maybe because it's part of this beautiful village. Or maybe it's because it was so cozy inside, whenever you step through the front door, you start to unwind. I wasn't sure what it was. But all I know is that it felt like home. Okay, well, I don't have a nice story like Yaz or Scott. My inspiration was watching videos of Nine Bites, and I picked a house to make and did pretty good at first and screwed up and went with that. Yeah, This lovely little bridge was built by Cherry. So finally, it was time for the grand reveal. For over three months, we put our time, energy, our hearts, our kidneys, and the extra toe we thought we never had use for. All of that hard work led up to this moment, and I want you, the viewers, to give it the name it rightly deserves. Here it is, The Plains Village. Oh wow, it's still loading in, holy crap. 
Where's the real estate agent? I'll buy this home. We faced many adversities. Some had us partially crippled or begging mercy please. Binions and I accomplished it all. And all of them were by my side still standing tall. But for this story, the curtain was finally closing. Will our bond and fellowship last or will it start decomposing? I looked at the Vinians and deep in my heart I started to sigh. Would I continue with this journey just to watch them fall before my eye?